So let's explore how AI is essential um, for the future in the next uh, session. It's called the state of Web3 in 2024. And our next speaker will walk you through the latest trends, practical use cases, and challenges, giving you the insights to help your business dive into this exciting new world. And for this, please welcome on the stage the co-founder of W3 Fund and W3 Vision, Victoria Klich, on the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for my presentation. I'm waiting for my presentation. I don't have a joke to tell, so I need to wait until my presentation. I don't know. Ah, perfect, perfect. Okay. Warmly welcome and GMGM, as we would say, in the Web3 world. And the reason for that is that in our decentralized digital world, where everyone lives around the globe, there's always a morning somewhere. So we always say GM to greet the people around the world. My name is Victoria, and I don't want to talk about what I do. You will learn it by the end of the presentation. I will uh, use the next 15-ish minutes to explain to you the state of Web3 in 2024. And actually, the really cool thing is that I have been here for three years in a row now, and I always did the same presentation. So State of Web3 in 2022 was all about Web3 use cases, what are the brands doing, um, what is Web3 actually. We were trying to educate the people. And the year after, we had, um, I think it was also in this hall, we had our very own stage, and we brought all our partners, we brought all the brands, we brought the Web3 people, and we created a place to interact and to exchange. And one thing that everyone is asking me all the time, and I always use the slide, is Web3 actually dead? If this is the case, I wouldn't have a job. So uh, I'm very happy to introduce you in to all, sorry, into all the use cases, but I understand what, why people think that Web3 might be dead because of all the recent news. So we have crypto going down, we have um, the Starbucks NFT loyalty program all of a sudden being cancelled, we have the Apple Vision Pro who was considered to be a fail and we can argue about that, but at least these, these are the headlines. Um, we have Donald Trump all of a sudden becoming a crypto maxi, which is not really a good reputation for ourselves. Um, and then we have Mark Zuckerberg, who all of a sudden turned his Meta project into an AI company. And all while the world is burning, these NFT degens are trying to sell their profile picture projects. Okay, throughout all the noise, it's my job now to make sure that you understand what is currently hot in the industry when it comes to Web3 technologies. And I divided this presentation, and I actually don't do this. This is the very first time that I do exactly this format, that I divided it into what am I surprised by and what am I actually not surprised by coming, uh, into the, coming from the last 12 months. So let's start with what I am not surprised by. Everyone is still crazy about Bitcoin. There is this Bitcoin craze, and I don't, I don't think that I have to explain to you what Bitcoin is, but since the Bitcoin spot ETF um, that was that came into January 2024. Everyone is all of a sudden investing in Bitcoin and especially the institutions are going crazy about this. And the really cool fact is that even this legit student high investment managers are all of a sudden becoming a meme on Twitter. And Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, one of the largest asset management funds of the world, is suddenly becoming a Bitcoin maxi, and I call him the Taylor Swift of Web3. Like, he's all of a sudden crazy about Bitcoin. He shills this to everyone. We also have new industries. So with technology evolving, with things getting better, we obviously get new opportunities where we can implement this technology. And that one of that is called Deepin. It's called Decentralized Physical Infrastructure, where you basically have um, physical data points connected to the blockchain. We have something like uh, Decentralized Google Maps, that is Hive Mapper, and we have a lot of institutions that you also know uh, going into that infrastructure projects. And tokenization is 
still a thing. So you can imagine that you can basically tokenize everything, every kind of real world assets. And I mentioned BlackRock before, they're still doing that because they tokenize their fund. And something that is actually not a new industry, but I want everyone to be aware of that, is stable coins. Um, this is basically when you have one US dollar is the same as one US dollar as a stable coin on the blockchain, so there is no volatility. And we live in a very privileged European world. We, all of us, and I'm pretty sure that about that, all of us have access to a banking system. We all have a banking account. We don't need to fear that all of a sudden we don't have access to our money. But on, in other countries, especially in African countries, in um, South America, there are a lot of people who have no access to the global finance industry. And through stable coins, they can participate in every global finance industry. So that is actually especially interesting for these kind of countries. And stable coins powered by blockchain are doing a significant part of that. The metaverse hype, and I. I can imagine that a couple of companies have been talking about this here already. The metaverse hype is still real. Um, there are a lot of kids and young, I, I mean, I also know people who play Roblox and Fortnite, but younger people who value the fact that they have an identity in this virtual world. And this is still important for thinking about at some point we will own these assets in these virtual worlds and this can potentially be by NFTs. We're not there yet, but keep this in mind. And uh, one interesting thing that actually happened that, uh, I mean, I'm not surprised by that, it was, but it was funny though, is that all of a sudden IKEA, a company that I would not necessarily associate with Web3, uh, was opening its own store in Roblox and also hiring people. So. I don't know if you can read this or if I'm in the way, but uh, the hiring process was actually quite funny. So you just needed to answer a couple of questions and then you were good to go, which is actually really cool. Um, I mentioned this in the last presentation last year, uh, but it's still a thing. Solana, one of the top three blockchains, is still an OG, a, kill pl a key player, sorry in that space. So they do a lot of partnerships and they also um, onboarded PayPal. So PayPal, I think every one of you, every one of you knows PayPal. Um, PayPal has its own stablecoin, PUSD, and they've been doing this on Ethereum. But uh, since a couple of weeks, they migrated to Solana because Solana is faster and easier to use. And we all want things that are easy to use. But they also came up with a lot of innovative projects, such as Solana Blinks, something where when you browse to your feed, you can integrate any kind of interfaces and do transactions without leaving your page, which is, I know it sounds very nerdy, and I, it is very nerdy, but it's actually quite revolutionary. Payments is still a thing. Like, I mentioned PayPal before, but Visa is also still going strong with partnerships, and uh, MasterCard was actually doing, a, or is still doing a partnership with one of the um, most famous um, wallets, MetaMask. And obviously, uh, Germany is still being German. Uh, I don't want to necessarily hate against Germany, uh, but they do funny, like, we do funny things sometimes. Um, you probably have streamed movie 4K at some point, at least if you're 27 as I am. Uh, the guys who own the website were actually holding a lot of Bitcoin and they got confiscated by the government. So the government at some point had a lot of Bitcoin and they dumped the market. They had to sell it. I, I get that. Um, so all around the world, Web3 community was actually making a lot of fun of Germany. And then we actually had a DFB NFTs, so similar to what you probably know from the Panini uh, magazines, but we had that as well. And believe it or not, even the Deutsche Post was doing a crypto stamp. I actually don't know how, what and why, but yeah, it's Germany. <laughs> um, sport clubs or sport clubs, uh, are like they are pumping um, and um, the first place basically has Bitpanda. You probably, if you watch soccer, you have seen Bitpanda uh, maybe live in a stadium or in advertisements. So Bitpanda is cooperating with FC Bayern, but they also just recently connected with AC Milan and now, now the official partner of the NFL. And it doesn't come, 
it doesn't come as a surprise. Sport clubs are really looking into new opportunities, how to interact and engage with their fans, like really trying to find new ways for that. And uh, for example, the AC Milan was also tokenizing their stadium, so you could buy NFTs from the stadium and they just like do fancy uh, fan engagement things. Um, but we also have Manchester, who've been doing virtual stadiums together with Etihad. We have One Football collaborating with Base, which is the layer two of Coinbase, and um, Animoca Brands, which is the most important and famous gaming VC around the world for Web3. Then uh, Dortmund, still with Coinbase, going strong. Um, and even the VfL Wolfsburg released a Web3 white paper. And last but not least, Messi tokenized his football shoe for whatever reason, but he did it. And now let's go to the section of things that I'm actually surprised by. So what happened that I was like, I haven't really expected that. And the very first place is Poly Market. And I, like, seriously, guys, guys check it out. Poly Market is a real-life betting platform um, where you can bet with stable coins. So I mentioned stable coins before. And people are betting on real-life events. And it got hyped uh, through the election campaign in the US. So people were betting on who's going to win, who's going to be the vice president. Um, and it has been actually used in national TV in the US because people trust the opinions of others. And you could always see, okay, what is the incentive? Like, what are the people in the US think about uh, who is going to win? What is the sentiment? But it's not just election. You can also check uh, what people bet on when it comes to is Taylor Swift being engaged by next month or so. Like, people are betting on everything. You, you can definitely check it out. It's actually quite, quite fascinating. I'm also surprised by institutional adoption. So one of the most largest investment management banks, KfW, uh, was partnering with Cashlink to create digital bonds on the blockchain. We also invested with our fund in the company Cashlink. Um, but we also have Telecom and Bosch figuring out ways how to uh, combine AI and blockchain. We have Telefonica and Cashlink doing things in South America to provide um, safe communication. And we also invested in a company that is focusing on the travel industry. So the travel industry is actually very, very, very much outdated when it comes to communication within the parties. And blockchain can create a standard for people to make things more automated, more easy and more transparent. I mentioned the Apple Vision Pro before. This is me. I'm actually wearing the same outfit, which is actually quite unfortunate. But this is me with the Apple Vision Pro. I thought it was really cool, but I understand why people said, uh, don't like it. Uh, Vision Pro is dead. But that doesn't stop Apple or any other companies to develop in that space. And you see Disney developing some kind of a carpet where you can walk around wearing a VR glass and just pretending you are in this outside world. And then we have also Sony and Siemens uh, collaborating on devices for the industrial metaverse. And you've probably seen the headlines in the last couple of months that Siemens is, Siemens is really going strong into that topic. And what they do is that they basically create digital twins of, let's say they want to create a fabric. They, they create digital twins to make sure or to test out processes before building that to uh, save resources. And I've mentioned Sony, but I didn't know this as well. Uh, Sony is like the OG in Web3. They're even in Web3 before me. Um, they've been doing things si since 2017. So they have building, been building own blockchains, pay patents. They have been buying companies. They're very strong in gaming and licensing. And yeah, I've mentioned it before. They're now working on another layer two blockchain um, for entertainment purposes. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I don't know if I'm surprised by that or not. Uh, but there is a comeback in meme coins. Um, I don't know if I need to explain meme coins, but coins with funny names and funny images on it. Um, I wouldn't invest into them, and I think I'm, I need to say this on stage, but it's just an interesting fact that you can, with meme coins, invest in culture, in meme culture. Um, and another thing, I've mentioned Coinbase before, but with their layer two base, when they launched, I think everyone in my bubble was like, Mm, who's going to use that? They don't even have a token. But now, this year, they came up with like a very cool um, campaign called On-Chain Summer, and they onboarded corporates, other brand companies, artists, to build on base. And base is actually very, very easy to use. It's super fast. And this is also the reason why so, 
so yeah, I don't know <laughs> why so many uh, people were starting to use space as a blockchain, as you can see on the left graph. Um, another good example, we're not in the US, but if you're in the US and if you go to a Walmart, you'll probably see these cute little penguins and they started as an NFT project in 2021. It was like really, really hyped. You cannot imagine how much money people were spending for these little penguins. Um, and at some point, this entrepreneur, Luca Netz from the US, was buying the whole IP of this NFT project and uh, started to go mainstream with that. Um, and now they are like these physical toys, and don't, don't underestimate the toy market. Um, he was doing physical toys um, for $8.99, I think, purchase in uh, the US, and created this like virtual and phys physical world for kids. And um, people who are holding these NFTs can actually get a cut of the revenue. Telegram, um, regardless of what happened with Telegram in the couple last weeks, is actually, they have their own blockchain. Um, and they use their blockchain for uh, splitting, for example, revenue stream from ads with their community. But there's also a huge, huge community building on Telegram because this whole uh, chat system is actually very, very easy to use for decentralized applications. So the whole Telegram blockchain network is actually quite big. Um, and everyone in the Web3 bubble, I don't know who of you knows that, but everyone is using Telegram. So we also do VC deals over Telegram. Um, Hugo Boss is back, and uh, they've been doing NFT loyalty regardless of the market, regardless of Starbucks, like, failing with that. And the reason why Starbucks failed was actually that, to be honest, revenue was not that high, and the quest that you need to do to participate in this uh, loyalty uh, experience was actually... I hope no one from Starbucks sits here, but it was kind of whack. Uh, but still, Hugo Boss is back. And um, they're interested in finding new engagement opportunities for their community. And this is the same case for Blackbird, which is like an app for loyalty within cafes, restaurants, like this whole gastronomy part. I think it's just a thing in the US. But they were also digitalizing the whole experience of collecting points and um, turning these points into other uh, things in other restaurants, all for their community. And uh, speaking of community, I promised you in the end, I also explain what the actual fuck we are, actually, we are doing. So um, people who know us knew that we were just a fund in the beginning. And I know I don't look like this, but I'm the co-founder of everything that you see on this wall. So on top of that, we have our group. And we're investing in early stage startups that are building these cool things that I've been explaining to you in the, couple, in the past 15 minutes. But we also have a token fund. So if you really want to go strong in tokens, you can also invest in us. If you're in Berlin, please come to our co-working space. Uh, it's right at Gleisdreieck Park. It's called W3Hub. We have a lot of companies that are doing really cool stuff in Web3 sitting there. We have tons of events. And we're basically building the home for these people. Then we have W3 Labs, which is just a fancy name that we're doing a lot of technical infrastructure stuff and staking. And last but not least, the W3 Vision, which is, you can imagine it as a like, media house for partners, for us, ourselves. We create content, we educate people. We want to make sure that people like you understand what I'm doing on a daily basis and that this technology has way more potential than just being traded uh, with cryptocurrencies, which I'm personally not that interested in because I want to see everyone at some point using blockchain without knowing that they use blockchain. Because to be honest, I think just barely of you guys understand how a smartphone works, but you're all using it because it has a certain purpose for you. And this is what we see with blockchain. And I'm perfectly on time. Thank you very much. That was my presentation.